so we made it into the tar camp. We've just been getting tents all set up. And uh, you can see some pretty good mountains around us right there. We saw, well, Barry saw a, uh, some nannies and a bull tar on the way in. But we can hunt all these and kind of go up over some of this stuff to keep looking on the backside. Hopefully find a couple bulls, try to kill. So uh, just see how it goes. We're getting our camp set up really well. Everything tied down real well because there's a chance in like three nights from now there's supposed to be a lot of wind. So just have to see how it goes. And uh, hopefully we can find some tar. It's 11 a.m. We're heading up. Got to get on this ridge line up here and then glass down and on the back side and everything. Try to find some tar. There's our water source. There's camp. I think we're going to head for that saddle right there and then work our way up and down from there. Smokes. That's big. So we were just eating some lunch and these tar just appeared down below us on the grass down there starting to feed. It's early too. It's not even one o'clock yet, so we just saw another one up behind us on the ridge line. It was a I think it was a juvenile male, but now these are showing up down below. And the tar are rutting, so hopefully a bull will pop out here at some point. You see another one, Barry? Yeah, I saw him right out. Oh. Yeah. Good. I'm glad we find Yeah, he's rushing. He's a good bull. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is... Is he going to bed? I don't know how big this guy is on the hill, either. He's all the way up top, though? Yeah, he's coming down. So, oh. Because he's going to come down onto the rushing pad. Yeah, but we can mark this one for later on. We don't have to go after him now. So there's some nannies right there, and then that bull is right above them. We're gonna try to work our way over to around that hill right there. It should be about under 400 yard shot if he stays there. There was also another bull that Barry spotted up here that was working his way down. So we're gonna try to work our way along, kind of along here, staying quiet. Once we get down a little bit, we'll be out of sight and then pop up over see if he's still there so he's right over in there we're trying to get to, I think right here and then we can shoot down we first saw him was up over here and he's worked his way all the way down there's some nannies and he's bothering them because he's running on that pad of grass that's what they feed on
level. He's in the back, right? I got like. I hit the chance. He was, he was, uh, yeah, like 210, 215. He was holding the most nannies. Yep. And he's the boy I saw come down the hill. So the, okay. he's dead right there. I should have it on GoPro, but we, we came from all the way right there, worked our way all the way around. And when we came up over this edge, Mark spotted him up here. We were, our plan was to get right up on top of that lip. Look, there was two bowls on the back side of that, but Barry had glassed one that was working its way down earlier, and we think that's that bull. But that was by far the biggest group. Hopefully that means it's the biggest bull if he was with that many. So we're gonna go check him out. It's still early too, it's only like three o'clock. Yeah. Is that them? Yeah, that's them whistling. So all of them went right up over that saddle towards that feed area where we saw the other ones. Yeah, I, couldn't shoot I thought that top. was I thought that was a bird. Huh. There's tar everywhere. Barry's trying to shoot one there. There's a group of about eight there and another group right there. But I don't see any more bulls except for one small one right there. Got lucky by about 15 minutes. All the fog is rolled in. It's right up here though. Here he is guys, so we counted the growth rings. He's either five or six years old, 11 inch bull. He's got a beautiful uh, mane on him. And uh, he was with a group of probably, I don't know, 12 maybe nannies and one other smaller bull. And uh, so we got to go up through, you can't see the saddle, but we got to go up through the saddle right there. <laughs> the fog rolled in and uh, still got a few more days to hunt. So it's a good way to, to start the tar portion of the trip. And uh, so, been a good day for sure. Hooks nicely around Hooks on itself. Nicely around. It's what gives it the length. Alright. Been climbing up this scree trying to get to that saddle. We're almost there. Climbing up this stuff is brutal. It's like you take two steps forward, one step back. So <laughs> we got uh, another just a little ways to go through the saddle and then down towards the tents on the bottom. Hopefully make it by dark, get some food. We're almost back. There's the tents right there. There's our water. Whew. That hike up was brutal. You see them hunting tar in places on TV that are like not gnarly. I've been told a lot of those places are actually on private land because this is some gnarly stuff. This is a real mountain goat sheep type hunt. Tar hunting day two. <clears throat> you can see it's nice up here, but the valley below is completely fogged in. And it fogged in on us yesterday. I got up in the night, uh, had to use the bathroom. It was like 2 a.m. and everything was still fogged in, but you can see that just down below is fogged now. So we're going up through that saddle behind me right there and uh, we're gonna glass the valley on the other side and if we don't see anything we're gonna go down through the valley up the next saddle and glass that next valley so it's supposed to be some bad weather coming in this evening so hopefully we can get it done this morning try to get number two on the ground 
We're gonna glass here for a few minutes and then we're gonna. Oh, yeah. no, wait. What saddle are we going to go over next? This one. So run over here to the right and go down there. What we're trying to do is see those bluff systems, the terraces down on there. Yeah. That's where you want to go because these ones here should have pulled out gone around the back. It could well be just down here. Okay. And I reckon there's bulls just down there. Yeah. I killed my bull down here last night and then there was a nice, pretty blonde one right over here that we were moving for when, when I shot mine. There were a whole bunch of nannies, so we're gonna glass this bowl for a bit. Then go over that saddle, look on the back side, and see if we can see a bowl over there. Just spend the day, or until the weather gets nasty, looking. You see, he's, he's, he's fluffier he's than the one. He's very we, blonde. Yeah, he's fluffier and older than the one we saw. <laughs> There's a good profile side pit angle. Yeah. Yeah. He's about the same as one yesterday, lip wise, but he's got the nice and main. That, so, that it, might be the one from that we were moving for. No, so that's the range, main. Can you range him as he range the ridge line? In so originally that bull was right over there, and some helicopter hunters came. They were hunting all around here and then flew up the back side of there and when he heard that he ran up this ridge and now he's kind of up in here we're just kind of keeping an eye on him see what he does if he beds down mike can move after him if not we'll just have to kind of watch him this is you can see this clouds here that's a front that's coming in it's supposed to be some bad weather later on today so hopefully he decides what he wants to do and we can make a play on him he's around a a thousand yards right there. There are some more nannies down here, no bull with them, and we've seen a couple more nannies over here and a smaller bull. So here's the plan now that big, big bull went like up over that way somewhere, and there was another bull and some nannies that went following him. So now we're gonna head back up here to this saddle that we were planning to go to originally and glass all the backside and see if we can pick up him or another bull. They weren't they weren't very spooky until a helicopter came through. Heli honey is a big thing with tar and they get smart and the only way they can survive when the helicopters come in is to get up in the rocks and the nasty stuff like that and just go kind of like hide up in there because the helicopters can't really chase them as much up there. So uh, we're gonna go up into the saddle and just sit in the glass and see what we can find. So here's what just happened. We were sitting in that saddle, and a little while before that, we had seen a bull up on these rocks, and we couldn't get a shot on him. So uh, Barry went around to watch the backside, and Mark and I came down, and we were going to get up on this ridge and look on the backside of this big this big bowl, because we had actually seen, this is the third bowl that we had seen come over these rocks. So as we're walking along this edge, peeking over, going to right there, I looked up and there were three or four tar skylined and there was a pretty good bull right on that rock right there. And we waited for him to move a little bit. I shot him in the chest. He came down the rocks and I think I hit him in the lungs. I think he was done, but I, I hit him again and he's right there, came all the way down. Looks like another pretty good one. So that's the third or fourth bull we've seen this morning. It's 11 a.m. It's been a good morning, so we gotta go back. We didn't take our packs because we were just going light to peek up over this lip here. We gotta go back, get knives and stuff, and come back and get them. There was not time to get the camera because we they've been moving through here and we haven't had a chance at any of the other ones when we've been on the other side, so we wanted to make sure we got on them and got a shot. There he is. We gotta get up here, take some pictures, skin him, and get out of here because there's some weather coming.
right, so here he is. We shot him up top and he rolled all the way down. This is, we think this is one of the bulls we saw earlier. It's got a really pretty mane. He's got that blonde ring and I uh, wanted to try to shoot two or get two mounted. So this is the second one and we still got one more day to hunt and we'll see what happens tomorrow. But it's a, got a great mane, really, really pretty mane. And uh, so now we gotta pack him up and get back to camp before the rain gets here. So we're back at camp. Um, I don't know what time it is, probably four something. They're still, um, Barry and his dad are still glassing right there on that knob behind my head. Um, killed a nice tar, got one more day. Here in New Zealand, there's no tags. The government calls a lot of tar, nothing's native. So you can kind of shoot as many as you want. My goal is to take two home. Uh, if not, if I end up shooting another one tomorrow, I'll just give the cape to Barry and them. Uh, they can sell it. Um, we were on a really nice tar this morning, the biggest one we've seen the whole trip. He was a dandy, he was blonde, long horns, and a helicopter came through. Most of your tar hunts that you see in New Zealand, not all of them, but most of them are done with a helicopter and not a helicopter like we did. We got dropped off. We've been hunting, backpacking, glassing, finding them, getting in place and shooting. What the helicopters do on most of the guided hunts is it takes about two hours or so. They fly up into a basin. They drop off a hunter in something maybe maybe like this, okay? Then they find a bull, they chase it with the helicopter until it runs by the hunter, and the hunter shoots it. If he misses once or twice or five times, circle around, chase it back by until the hunter shoots it. So the tar have to get really smart really quickly if they want to survive. So when we've noticed a helicopter's gone by here, what happened this morning is they were hunting the backside of another ridge. That bull heard it and he went straight to the rots because the best way they can survive is to get up into this gnarly stuff and like hide in caves or just get away as fast as possible so they don't get herded back to a hunter. So like I said, it's completely legal, but most of the tar that you see shot on public land or on guided hunts, unless they ex explicitly say that that's not what they're doing, that's how they're hunting them. They can do multiple guided trips like that a day. Usually they do it first thing in the morning um, and it's not illegal. It's not really how I would want to hunt them, um, but it's how it's done. And so Mark and, and Barry and them, they've learned to to kind of uh, hunt with that and use that to their advantage. Or today it was kind of a disadvantage and we had to change our game plan up. So one more day, maybe one more tar, we'll see. And uh, it's been a heck of a, a hunt here. I should say one more day for tar. Maybe there might be a day for something else later on, but one more day for tar. It's been a really fun hunt. And um We'll see what tomorrow brings. Look at this. <laughs> so much that's time. bigger than any, than... No, it is. That's a good one. If he came out a little bit. He needs to come down there. Let's just have a good look at those hooks. Just a bit suspicious of the hook. Yes. I can't tell because no, we can't tell yet. He's got them. He's got the better mane, and so at the moment you'd say you'd shoot him because when he came out of the cave because he was a bit more scrunched up because he was trying to fit for a cave. You'd have you to you'd, the hook. look at him giving her a hard time. Come here, no, you little beauty. Right this is behind us, squeaking away. <laughs> 